what we've got here is uh, we're in the middle of a war with the Mamluks and their allies. So that's the Mamluks, Shamar, Najad, and uh, their vassal, Hijaz. Uh, we've kind of making our first breakthrough. Uh, we're trying to reconquer the Syrian cores for our vassal. And, uh, you know, they're willing to accept peace and give some up, but I think we can push them for more. Now, the one problem is that our army is... Uh, it's about the same size as the uh, opposing alliance. So, you know, I'm hesitant to actually go out and try to knock out these allies. And then, you know, because I'm afraid they'll just make a counter push in to where my lands that I've captured. And I'm also hesitant to kind of like split up my armies because if we get outmaneuvered and surrounded, uh, we'll probably start losing wars. Um, the good news is, looking at the actual war itself, we can still get like another 20 war score just from ticking mod you know, the ticking modifier because we control Tadmor. Um, what I'm thinking about doing is just pulling my guys back into like these two provinces and leaving the newly conquered fortress here in Al Karak in the hopes that the enemy will just start stacking on. Uh, you know, you know, armies to besiege it and take it back. And since we control the fort now, and it's a mountainous area, you know, we'll we can you know go back in and attack, and they'll have a negative two uh, modifier because of the mountains uh, to the rolls. And you know, maybe we can just you know juice up war score by winning battles and letting just time tick forward. So we're gonna try that. If they don't take the bait. Uh, we'll have to reconsider what we want to do. I mean, honestly, at this point, we can just sit and let the clock run uh, until we get kind of the full ticking war score. Um, we can also consider, you know, letting the clock run until it's, you know, the war score is full through, uh, you know, all the way up. And then we're just racing and besieging uh, the Mamluk capital in uh, Cairo. And that's because... If you look at kind of uh, the peace deals here, we've got a diplomat open, so you go to sue for peace, and then you'll say, oh, I want all this, right? And then he'll say, uh, you know, no, and he'll give you his reasons why. And uh, one of them is, you know, Mamluk holds, uh, you know, Cairo, Korea, and just by, you know, we don't have to actually siege it down just by being sitting on it uh, that'll kind of lower that modifier by five so you know you take your your peace points kind of as as you can and um, we'll see where that takes us so um, I think that's the plan for now uh, let's just kind of look at what uh, the supply limits are for these areas And we'll kind of reorganize our armies accordingly. Oh, and it looks like they are taking the bait. That's uh, that's kind of great news. So I'm just kind of reorganizing my armies right now just so we see where we're at. And we'll just wait for this guy to get movement locked going into Karak and Al Karak. And we'll just kind of send whichever one's kind of the, the biggest army at the time. And we'll counterattack. And so we'll, we'll win some battles and we'll kind of gin up our uh, war score here. All right, I guess he decided against it, probably because our armies are kind of just sitting right here. But what if we were to pull back a little bit farther? Because this fort, you know, it's garrisoned. It won't fall immediately. So let's try pulling back just a little bit farther. Like, let's get these guys to go to Jaffa. 
Uh, we'll get these guys go to Damascus and this guy to Suwadaya. Just make sure they don't overlap. And we'll see if that changes our mind. All right, and it looked like we uh, converted one of our provinces. Let's see what else we want to convert. We'll go for uh, Malataya next. And again, the reason why Malataya is converting much faster, well, one of the reasons is that we've got that state edict to enforce religion on. And so when we convert this province, we'll have to remember to turn it off to save some money. All right, so it looks like they're forming up and they're deciding to come in. And he's kind of uh, movement locked, so let's see if we can't uh, take him out in time or if he's just going to run away. And we'll just move this guy a little bit closer just in case. Alright, so it looks like uh, we baited them into the fight. As you can see, they've got the uh, terrain modifier. And this guy's locked in as well. Um, we're going to let this fight kind of progress. And if it looks like we're starting to lose morale faster than these two combined armies. We'll send in our uh, second uh, kind of army into here. No, it looks like we've got that in hand. Okay. Uh, so again, we don't want to go towards mysticism. We want to go towards legalism. And plus, monthly autonomy change. Uh, not a good thing. So we will go ahead and uh, do this. And we won that battle. So we're just going to pull back our armies again. We'll pull them back to uh, Java, Jaffa. And then we'll also move back again. Hopefully we'll be able to bait them in again. Um... I'm not too familiar about like where these guys sh flee to on Shattered Retreats. I assume it's maybe Cairo or you know Tabuk or something like that, or maybe even an allied area. So I don't want to like chase down these broken armies. Um, I think that again, it'll kind of leave them open to come back in and kind of exploit their way through. All right, so it says here that we can take military technology, but we're still three years ahead. Um, I'm going to leave it alone. We'll have to just keep an eye to make sure we don't go over on mil tech. And we'll just spend the excess on uh, uh, kind of developing our lands and raising our national manpower. And so it looks again like they're going to do, well, hopefully they'll try to take it or something like that. No, so it looks like they're not going to fall for that again. At least not with the amount of troops they have here. Uh, but that's okay. I mean, again, the longer this war drags on, the more it goes in our favor. Okay, so they're coming back in. And it looks like he's locked, so let's see if we can't uh, catch him again. Alright, that's excellent. Uh, also a thing to consider is... Oh, wow, nice. A stack wipe. Oh, no, they're, they're fleeing. Uh, as we keep winning these wars, um, they're going to burn through their manpower. And once that happens, we'll notice that they'll be able to field less armies than us. Uh, and that's going to happen if they keep on doing stuff like this. And once that happens, then we can safely say, oh, well, I mean, they might be able to hire mercs. I don't know how much money they have. Um, but I'll feel safer maybe sending a group to take out one of the allies and then sending a group, you know, to, to start besieging this area around here. Um, but uh, for now, I think that the way we've got it going is pretty good. Uh, I've got a spare diplomat, so let's just send him, uh, well, let's put him on auto. Uh, uh, auto subject countries? I guess we've only got, like, one subject at the moment. Uh, but I, I, I feel good about topping off relations with uh, Syria, even though he's going to love us for all the... Well, he's not going to love us for all the land we give him. You see, since we're, our war goal and our peace treaty is going to involve just directly giving them land, they don't actually get like a, an opinion bonus, I don't believe. Maybe they do. We'll have to double check afterwards. I know that if I was to take the land for myself and then grant it to them, then their opinion of us would improve, but I'm not sure if we win it in a war 
for them if that would be the case. Um, and so one of the reasons why we want to make this one province vassal happy and maxed out on opinion is soon, because of our actions, he's going to grow in size and power. And the bigger your vassals get, the more ornery they get. So if we go over here to our subjects tab, you'll see here Liberty Desire, and it'll give you a bunch of modifiers. And one of them is from development, you know, point, you know, for now it's just 0.7 because they're a tiny one province minor. But you'll see that that number is going to go up a lot more once we uh, regain all that land for them. So again, let's just go back out. And hopefully we can bait them back in again. And you'll see how I'm kind of taking turns so these guys can kind of be at full uh, manpower when we do do this. Okay, so it looks like uh, they're committing a bunch of troops here. Uh, let's kind of, uh, let's wait just a little bit more. So they sit on there. And this one's actually going as far as, uh, as rock. So, so what I think we're going to do is we're going to wait for this guy to get movement locked. We'll take these guys in to wipe them out. We'll bring these guys around and attack those guys. Um, now you'll see that they're going to be stacking like a larger stack than what I'm attacking with. But I still feel good about it, and the reason being, right now, our, you know, because of military technology, and we're of equal military technology as our enemies, the max combat width is 22. So, the fact that they have more guys just standing on the sidelines and reserves, that's good because they can, you know, come in and fill in, uh, the, you know, for the dead people, uh, for the dead units, but, uh, alright, um, so, so... You know, I still feel pretty good taking the fight, and in any case, these guys will wipe out these guys real quickly, and if things start to go sideways in our, you know, battle here, we need more reinforcements, they can just swing back in. Uh, but again, we kind of just want to concentrate the enemy, you know, defeat them, and then gin up our war score. And you can kind of see a breakdown of why your war score is what it is. And it'll kind of list it all out, and I guess the list is too long here, but you'll see here that, uh, uh, let's take a look here. Is there some kind of breakdown we can do? Oh, here we go. Um, with every battle that happens, right, it'll tell you whether you won or lost the battle. And it'll also give you a score breakdown of in what direct, you know, how much that win or loss will push the war score of the war. So, kind of the more uh, opponents die, uh, the more it changes it. Now, there, it does max out, I believe, um, in terms of battles. I'm not 100% certain, but I'm fairly certain. You can uh, you can confirm that for me if you want, Firestar. But yeah, so now we're just going to wait for this guy to get movement locked. Alright, so he's movement locked, so we're going to bring these guys in. We're going to attack there, and then we're going to swing these guys around, and we're going to attack there. Did you see that? It's like he disappeared. <laughs> oh well. We'll chalk that up to some kind of a weird bug or something. Alright, so once again, we'll just kind of pull back. And you see, we're just kind of slowly ginning up our war score. And what we want to get, hopefully, to, and I don't know if it'll be possible, but we want to get to around 88, because I think that's the war score cost of all of the Syrian land. And we can, again, grab so much of the Syrian cores because it's a reconquest ca casus belli, as opposed to just a regular conquest. So I'm going to keep on taking these fights, whittling down their manpower, uh, and then uh, if we see that the fights aren't doing anything anymore, then maybe we'll just, like, decide if we want to take out the allies, because that'll reduce their war score or we'll decide if we just want to just sit our armies on Cairo. Let's take a look here. Uh, and that'll just be Miltech 6. Although, do me a favor and, and chime in if I start to reach a real close to the limit. I think maybe in January I'm going to spend some uh, mill power uh, and just up my uh, manpower across the Empire.
All right, sad. One of our advisors died. It happens. Um, it'll give you the age of the advisor, so like when you're hiring, keep that in mind, because if you hire an old advisor, he'll just die quickly. So let's see uh, who we can get in this position. Uh, we have a missionary strength guy. Uh, he's plus three. Um, I believe he's full price. Yeah, he's full price. Uh, we've got a plus two yearly prestige. That's pretty good in a, a plus one uh, national unrest. Um, let's take a look at our economy. See, even in the middle of a war, while reinforcing the armies, we're still uh, drawing kind of like a positive income. And we've got some mercs also. So that's actually pretty good, but let's... Uh, I mean, how useful, so, you know, we can always go for the most expensive one, right? And just start running a deficit. But, like, let's also talk about how useful their individual stuff is, so to speak. Um, in terms of missionary strength, I'm a... Uh, no, the event hasn't fired yet, so I'm assuming the king is still alive. Uh, in any case, I do have them allied uh, and royal married, just in case... For some reason, the event isn't scripted to fire on the death of the king. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, hopefully, you know, in either case, we'll be able to uh, vassalize them. Uh, so as you can see here, like, uh, this stuff, that's all going to be our uh, vassal's land. So we don't care about changing that religion. We're in the process of changing this, and we're doing pretty good without a missionary strength advisor. Uh, all of this land is not converted. However, uh, let's take a look at our like religious unity. We're at like 90% religious unity, and it's only going to uh, go up. And the reason being is that we're giving a lot of this, and we're going to give more uh, when I have a chance to look at it, to the Dimmy. And so I'm going to keep giving the Dimmy this heathen land, all the Christian land, uh, and until they get to a point where I'm starting to worry about their influence in our empire. And when you give the Dimmy land that's of a different religion, uh, I believe there's a reduced penalty for being uh, uh, not the correct religion in terms of religious unity for your empire. And then it's just something else that we'll have one more estate to play with and ask stuff for. And we'll also uh, have more states or, um, yeah, more states to kind of recruit uh, the Janissaries from. Uh, now, I know that, like, yesterday I was freaking out and doing bad math uh, because I was worried about a possible Janissary disaster. But I believe uh, that it's uh, kind of the same as all the other disasters in that in order for the disaster to happen, all of those things under the first can happen under the following conditions have to be correct. Like, they have to be checked off. So... We can run a whole bunch of Janissaries, regardless of whatever our stability is, uh, during the Age of Discovery. Um, but then, after that, we're going to have to... Okay, excellent. So after that, we're going to have to uh, keep an eye on our stability. Because, uh, you know, getting, getting better combat units at no cost for manpower... I mean, that's a really, that's a really powerful buff. Uh, as I believe Davester was saying a couple streams ago, so... Uh, so let's, uh, okay, well, here I am talking about stuff, and then I don't actually do it. Uh, so I'm not worried about converting lands right now, so I'm not going to get this guy. Also, he's kind of expensive. It would be nice to get plus three admin, um, but I'm feeling, uh, I'm feeling like we were generating enough admin uh, that, you know, shortly after we can tech up, we'll be able to tech up, and we'll still be able to get uh, all of our ideas out. Uh, because we're, we're, we're pulling in, like, 12, and we're going to pull in more when we put an advisor on there. Uh, so, a yearly prestige, guys, is always good. Um, you know, I, we were kind of at, you know, middling prestige before, but we're getting more from fighting these battles. Um, uh, so, but, you know, he'll help during peacetime to keep it from decaying too quickly. A national unrest guy is really good, too. Um, but he's only, like, plus one. Okay, well, another thing is actually, with this DLC, if they're of your same religion and culture, uh, you can kind of uh, promote them for money. And uh, that's a pretty good thing. So one thing we could even do is, is purchase the National Unrest Advisor uh, and then promote him. 
So maybe that's what we should do. Yeah, I mean, less national unrest is always good. And soon we're going to be conquering a bunch of land, you know, from for ourselves, from Venice and the friends. So let's take the national unrest guy. And uh, I'm not going to upgrade him. Uh, let's take a look at what our mission fulfilled is. So we finally got the high income, uh, you know, mission fulfilled. Now someone was telling me that I should hold off on taking the bonus until I get tech up to manufactories. Um, and that's probably a good idea. It's also kind of boring. And I don't know, like, what the utility is like. Because the sooner you make these, like, income generating buildings, the better. And we have a bunch of money in our treasury. And even while we're reinforcing, we're still kind of positive. Like, that might change if we lose a lot of men. But I think we're at, like, a pretty good point in this war where I'm not too worried about that. So I think I'm going to take the mission and turn it in. And then we'll get negative construction cost by 10% and construction time reduced by 25%. Okay? And uh, so we'll take our treasury now and we'll start investing in buildings for our economy now while we have this bonus going on. So we'll just click on our macro builder. We'll go to uh, buildings. We'll go to mosques. And we're going to start building away. Now, you know, t plus 20 is like a really good rate of return. I'd say plus 13, plus 12. Let's just say, uh, let's just hold off here. So we still have some money in reserve. And uh, hopefully, you know, maybe these will, you know, some development will come in or something like that. But for now, I think that's good for buildings. Uh, and let's wait out this war some more. Uh, what do you mean? They are in the enemy alliance against us. Whoops. Alright, so we can take army tradition and Umera likes us and merchant guilds dislike us. Or, you know, get professionalism. We're taking the army tradition and the Umera loyalty so that now we'll have a couple of estates. Oh, look at this! Okay. This is an amazing moment. All of my estates are okay with me. I mean, they don't like me, but they're finally okay. And it only took us what, 20 years? That's not so bad. So, uh, let's do that. Also, since they all do like us, let's kind of take a look at when's the next time we can demand... Uh... Oh, no, I actually did it with Dawasir. So, yeah, I do have the religious scholar here uh, from Dawasir. The negative 10 uh, AE guy. Uh, so... Let's look at our estates. Let's look at, like, uh, merchant guilds. And we're waiting for, like, we're an alert that says that, uh, you know, this event has expired. And once that happens, we're going to start to really look at our estates. Uh, we're going to look at our estates, and we're going to uh, see what we can do again. Like, when we just first started our first day of the game, uh, we're going to see if we can, you know, juice them up in terms of influence and whatnot. To the point where we can get a bunch of free monarch power and at the risk of their anger. So, all right, we're gonna let this war keep going. Um, a couple other things to note here. Uh, <laughs> when I first started this war, like I purposely moved my entire fleet here, and I hit the go button. I was so engaged with what was going on here, I didn't notice that uh, the Allied fleet was my. Well, at the time, Ramazan was still. Uh, independent while well, they were still our vassal we hadn't integrated them yet and so they had their ships here with a bunch of mamluk ships and we could have easily just sent our fleet down to save them and win the win the battle but i wasn't even paying attention so they ended up like losing boats uh but when we did finally integrate them we got all this stuff from them which is great uh so maybe what we should do is also just kind of bring our fleet together and even them up just to uh prove well how about this well let's talk uh while we wait for more guys to attack al karak Let's try to, like, kind of spread out our fleet, uh, because I don't even see the Mamluk fleet here. And we'll just try to uh, siege um, and blockade as much as possible. And we can talk about sales speed and all that kind of stuff. Okay, uh, so... Uh... What's the best way to show this? 
Okay, well, okay. So the easiest way to do this actually here is we've got all of our guys in one fleet. It's next to Thrace and Greece. Oh, the Mamluk fleet? Oh, there they are. Okay, so actually what they're doing is they're blockading us. And, uh, you know, that's going to hurt our uh, economy. And it's going to hurt our, uh, our, our uh, war exhaustion. Now, our fleet is probably bigger than theirs. We got six lights, ten galleys, seventeen transports. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, good call, Firestar. Why don't we just merge our fleets up, go up here, and defeat them. And then what we're going to do is we're going to chase them down to where they flee to repair. And that's where we're going to start our initial blockade. And then we'll know that they're kind of, you know, they'll be too scared to go out and fight us unless they start building a bunch of ships. And that takes both time and money. And then we'll take the extra fleet that we have and we'll send it out to blockade the rest of their lands and uh, increase war score and, you know, increase their war exhaustion. So let's do that. Thanks, Firestar. Alright, so Evlonia either gets uh, local unrest and less manpower, or we negotiate. We're taking the unrest and manpower. It's only one province, so... Uh, Hey, and look, we captured a couple ships as well. So these guys are fleeing towards the Gulf of Bamba. Yeah, I know, it makes sense because you can uh, uh, do a blockade of so much Ottoman land. I mean, that's what I do when I'm a, like a Christian coming in and fighting them. Uh, so let's detach all these guys who've been wounded. And let's just send them to Selenik. And these other guys, is we're going to go here. And we're going to kind of just chase them down a little bit. And see. And I'm kind of keeping an eye here also to see when they start besieging again. Alright, so it looks like they've done it again. So we'll take our better general's army and we'll march them in. And basically, uh, ships heal when in a friendly port at a rate of 10% uh, per month. And you don't have to be there for the full 30 days. If you can manage to sneak your ships in before the monthly tick, that counts as a full month of repair. Uh, so something to keep in mind. So it looks like they're making kind of a last stand here. This is nice. Uh, so we'll have to just keep an eye out on this, see how the battle's going. We might have to bring in our extra guys as well. Uh, but I think between these two groups, we'll be able to... Uh, fight them off. Alright. And so the reason why I was kind of pointing that out is like some of these guys were only like hurt like down to the 90 percentages. Whoops. So we're going to grab all our healed ships. And we're going to merge them back with our main fleet. And again the idea is just to kind of box in this fleet so it doesn't cause any mischief. Uh, and then when we've got the kind of full amount, we're going to kind of send out parts, parts of our fleet out to blockade what's left. Uh, so let's just do that. Let's keep an eye on this war here. Or this battle. I keep calling a battle a war, and that's uh, it's not really conducive. So it looks like we're winning. I'm going to let this run just a little bit farther. If it looks like our roles are changing or our luck's changing. Okay, great. So we'll just send them back to uh, kind of rest and heal up and it looks like we're still getting a war score so that's good and right now they're kind of at medium enthusiasm so it's like before when they were on high enthusiasm and when we offered peace they're less likely to want to you know, make a, like a fair deal uh, so again we're just gonna keep taking these battles we're gonna let the war score tick up for us and we're gonna let their kind of war exhaustion from all this disaster keep building up and you know, it's kind of a, you know, we may not, you know, get the best peace deal like we would if we somehow, you know, occupied all of this and knocked out both uh, allies and occupied all the vassal land. But it's going to be good enough that, uh, you know, at a certain point there's kind of a diminishing return, you know, unless it's a tiny nation. So, 
if that makes any sense. All right, so that was another kind of monthly tick. And we'll check here, see who else has been healed up in port. Send some light ships out there. All right, so it looks like uh, the Austrian emperor has managed to pass the first reform. Uh, this is not that important for us. Um, when the AI is the emperor, you know, they usually do a pretty good job as emperor up until uh, Protestantism appears and you start having kind of, you know, the, you know, the 30 years war going on situation in, in Germany and, and Europe. Uh, and then things just fall apart. So you really don't have to worry about them kind of getting very far along. Uh, but it is something we'll keep an eye out on because eventually we are going to have to fight Austria. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, we don't want them to get too powerful. But there's also cool options, like, you know, if you do a really good job fighting Austria, you can force them to revoke a, a reform and, and set them back and whatnot, but I don't think it's going to come to that. Yeah, most of the time. I think like so so kind of the plan of the series is we're gonna play this until there's I feel like there's not much more we can talk about at least like for this situation uh, then just for a variety's sake I might do one on like Crusader Kings 2 uh, or Stellaris uh, and then we'll go back to you know we'll kind of go one by one by one and then come back and so I think the next plan I have for my next EO4 kind of uh, kind of a, a tutorial it's going to be we're going to be playing as france so we're going to be playing as a large easy uh, catholic nation and so we'll talk about messing around with the empire a little bit uh we'll also talk about doing like a colonial game and that kind of stuff and then i think between those two nations the ottomans and france we'll have like europe covered uh and then we'll see about maybe like doing a uh you know uh what do you call it a mughal run or an Aztec run and do that. Uh, so, of course, the the more difficult the starts are, uh, you know, the less confident I am. But I think that by that time, you know, it'll just be more like let's plays, and it'll, it won't be as much uh, tutorial stuff. So, hopefully, they'll move faster. There'll be less talking. So again, we're going towards legalism, and let's move these last couple of uh, ships out. Join them with the main fleet. And... Just got that one light fleet in there. Alright, so it looks like these guys are... Uh, well, maybe we can go to some bigger stacks to come in. You see, like, we don't have to worry about this fort falling until it hits around, unless it's a positive number. So even at 0%, we don't have to worry about them ruling and, and you know, by some miracle winning the siege. So we can gain prestige, lower development cost, the cost of local tax. Uh... So 15 years of higher development. And how developed is Adana? All right, we'll support it. We'll be benevolent. Look at that. It looks like they're switching stuff up. Uh... Uh, what's the terrain here? Let's take a look. It's dry lands. Doesn't have any rivers. So why not attack both these 
armies separately. Now we won't get the bonus, uh, the bonus for that second war, but uh, you know I'm, I'm still feeling really good about these wars here, these little battles. Once again, we'll just move back again, and occasionally what happens is as your generals fight, they get certain abilities. This is actually a really good one, infantry combat ability, and that'll last. It'll be kind of applied to the general for uh, as long as he is alive. Uh, don't count, don't get too attached to your generals. Uh, they tend to die, you know, and usually at the worst times. Uh, so, I don't know what to say else, uh, else to say about that. But, uh, okay, so we've got our entire fleet here, and they're hemming in the Mamluk fleet. And the Mamluk fleet is actually mostly transports, a galley, and two light ships. Uh, so what we can do here is we can just say, like, if we were to detach a blockade here, it will calculate the minimum you need to block what's going on here. Now, we're not going to leave the bare minimum uh, because we want to make sure that they don't even decide to leave port. So now that we know the bare minimum, let's say, let's give them uh, a total of five galleys, all right? Uh, because... Or heck, even all the galleys. Why don't we put all the galleys here, right? Because no one else is coming. And the only fighting that might possibly happen naval-wise here is going to be if they try to leave port. All right, so we're going to leave the galleys here. We're going to move the barks here, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to detach a siege, detach a siege here, and then we'll kind of sail west and detach a siege here to blockade Benghazi. Uh, and that should increase our war score and lower their uh, desire for war a bit. Uh, one thing that kind of annoys me is that, like, they want these nice animations, so even after you guys already landed here, like, it slowly moves over so it looks nice, but I'd prefer if it just, like, got there on that day, you know? Uh, it's just a little thing that... Why not? Why not listen to me complain, right? So it looks like we're gonna we're gonna pull like maybe like one galley off of here. Yeah, I'll have to. You're right. I have, I might have to check that out. And we'll see what one additional galley will do. Now this is all based on like uh, sail speed and whatnot, but uh, I'm not too familiar with it. All I know is that uh, lighter ships are better at blockading, uh, uh, and that is pretty much all that I know. I just know you gotta leave ships to blockade. Now, it looks like they're grabbing a whole bunch of military units here, so, I mean, has someone else declared war on them? No. Uh, my guess is that they're kind of just trying to regrow their army. Alright, so the blockade's at 96% with one galley, and we know we only need, like, two galleys here. So let's move one last galley there. And we're also going to move one galley in the opposite direction, and hopefully that'll be enough to blockade Benghazi, but we'll take a look. Okay, so we'll even, like, we're at 51% with one galley, so we know all it's, all it's going to take is one more galley, and it'll be a full blockade. Alright, so you can see here, you know you're at a full blockade because it's got that 100%. That means 100% of all the ports that move into this sea from your enemy are blockaded. Uh, and so obviously, the higher, the, the more ports they have, the more ships you're gonna need for uh, blockades. More importantly, the higher the development of the province, the more ships you're gonna need for a blockade, because it's just like a larger uh, group of humans, you know? Uh, so, just something to consider. Now, we can't get a complete blockade on the Mamluks because they've got these open ports in the Black Sea. But the fact that we are blockading them all over the place. See, now they've dropped down to low uh, 
kind of uh, war, uh, what do you call it? War enthusiasm. So let's, uh, let's pull back our guy from... Syria, and let's see if they'll accept our terms now. Oh, because I wanted to take enough guys out to do 100% blockade on all the Mediterranean coasts. And I'm not too worried, because if you look here, they've only got two light ships, a galley, and the rest is all transports. And so worst case scenario, if they die, decide to charge out, we'll just grab our fleets from nearby and come in. But it is a good good spot there. You know, it looks scary. They got fourteen, you know, uh, you know, fourteen ships there. So let's wait for our uh, diplomat to come back, and let's see how they feel about peace now. So we're gonna sue for peace. We're gonna clear our offer from before because I was just goofing off, and we're gonna say return cores to Syria. Okay, so they won't return all the Syrian cores, but let's see how close they are. Uh, so the main reasons they're not going to do it is uh, the demands exceed the war score. Uh, it's still been a rather short war, and they hold their capital, and they got some, some, some strength in their army. That's okay. Uh, we'll just let this continue on a little bit longer. Uh, we can still get about 12 and a half more war score just by waiting... And I think they're just going to send, keep sending people into the meat grinder here. So that's just going to be good kind of uh, war. Uh, okay. Uh, so that's just going to be good, uh, what do you call it? Army tradition, you know. All right, so they got another uh, kind of bunch of people here. And let's, uh, let's stop by and say hello. So it looks like they're reinforcing it, but again, I, I think that we're pretty good here. Yeah. Okay, so our first general has died. Very sad. Uh, but I guess that was one of the ones that I created when I was panicking a little bit early in the war. So uh, we still got two generals up, so we're good to go. And now again, we're just so... For some reason, his war enthusiasm is up. I think it's because he built all these new military units... Uh, but there's nothing really he can do. He's kind of hemmed in. He can only keep trying to come in and, and reclaim his lands. So, again, I'm not too worried about it. Now, it probably is faster to just go in and, uh, and, and finish him off. Uh, but this is safer, I believe. And, uh, you know, I'm, this, this is probably a safer just uh, method of doing it. Now we're starting to get a little, well, well, not really. Alright, so one thing I wasn't keeping an eye on was my military power here. Uh, so we went over the 999. Luckily, we haven't gotten too far over, and because we're behind on institutions, it was still saving the uh, power. Uh, so let's look again, and we're kind of in the final year, so in about uh, nine months, we're going to tech up. But in the meantime, let's spend some of that uh, military tech on development. So we're just going to development. I'm going to sort by cost. Um, now again, if we wanted to be really good, we could like develop lands that the, the Omera, our military estate holds. But I'm still not like 100% on where they're finally going to be sitting because um, you know they start out in random areas. So I'm just going to go wherever it's cheapest and increase manpower. And then we'll move the Omera around uh, when possible accordingly. So, so we'll go to the cheapest. And it's 40 here. And we'll keep going.
going where it's cheapest. And we can't increase military because it kind of outstrips uh, uh, the other developments, but that's good. So we're down, to, we, we, we burnt through about 400 military power, just increasing manpower through developments. We'll keep the rest at like 600, because that'll just go away as soon as we take the tech uh, in January. So. All right, so it looks like they're sending in another group of guys. Ooh, look at that. We came close to losing that one. We might lose that one. did lose that one. I should have been paying more attention. I got a little bit lazy. Uh, this next stack will, will wipe them out. Alright, that's a bummer. I got a little cocky there. Uh, we're not going to convert anywhere else. Oh, you're right. Let's take a look. I bet they teched up, huh? Yep, they teched up. Okay. Good call. So I guess in a war, it makes sense to go ahead and tech up accordingly. And we can, uh, and maybe we'll do that before our next battle. Uh, does it change any kind of unit types? Uh, it changes the cavalry. So we got, well, okay, so when these guys finish uh, retreating, we're going to kind of merge some of our units, because we had these six extra just infantry sitting around, and then, you know, so we'll drop this army, like, infantry size down by six uh, by merging stuff. Uh, that'll, you know, be nicer on our manpower, and then we'll just bring them down, and they'll uh, reinforce. And it looks like another one of our generals has died. So let's hire a general. All right, pretty good general. Because we have like a nice high uh, war. Uh, I keep on forgetting the name of that. We have a nice high army tradition. So we're getting better general roles. And this guy's like, uh, he's like straight threes all across. Look at that. So before we do that, let's take our infantry. Uh, and I believe there's like a hot key, like if you hit I. No, I guess not. Maybe that's just like someone's special mods, but. Let's take all these guys. Seven. And merge them. Um, I don't want to merge the Mamluk infantry. Oh, um, because I could afford it at the time, uh, and I didn't, like, I, I knew I was going to be kind of chewing through some manpower. I mean, I could get rid of them. Um, oh, also, uh, because, oh, well, the real reason Firestar is this. So, when I was planning the war originally, right, like, I had my guys sitting in Aintab, and I had my guys sitting in, like, Araka, Okay. And, uh, you know, the fort was here, and so I was saying out loud, I was like, well, the fort here, it's going to prevent me from taking this land, right, you know, entering this land because of zone of control. 
but because this is our province, we can march straight into here and not worry about zone of control. And so, you know, I, you know, I brought you know a siege, you know, a group to siege down here. I kept these guys down here to keep an eye on things. And then the Mamluks just marched an army straight up into Adana. And uh, uh, at the time, Adana was owned by a vassal, so they only had a, uh, uh, a level, you know, a, a, a capital for it. And if they had wanted to, they could have just marched straight in and you know gone wherever they wanted. Uh, but luckily, they decided to stop to try to siege it. So um, since I had like my army split here and then like 10 units here and like another, uh, you know, 12 here, I hired a bunch of mercs and then we all kind of merged in and attacked them in Adana. Uh, I think they managed to sneak out before we could attack, but uh, that's one of the reasons. But yeah, we can get rid of some of these merc units because we are starting to lose just a little bit of money from reinforcements and merc costs. Uh, so we ended up getting rid of like two infantry here. Uh, we're down to... Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, and, and sometimes the uh, zone of control is janky, but this was totally me. I was treating it as if, like, this was owned by the Mamluks, too. Uh, so, let's say, uh... 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Uh, let's get rid of two Merc units here. Let's merge... Let's merge the Merc units, see what we got. Oh, that'll, uh... That'll get a rid of one. Fourteen. That'll be twenty. Alright, so 13 plus 6 is 19, plus 4 is 22. So that looks like it's going to be our maximum width for army size, or for armies. Uh, the combat width is increasing uh, with the next uptick. Oh, are you talking about, uh, like, Riemann's Paradox, that guy? Yeah, that guy's really good. Uh, like, he's the guy who, like, if you're thinking, like, huh, how do I do this? He's definitely a guy that I check out. Um, uh, he just doesn't, like, the reason why I did this, even though guys like him and, like, Arumba and others are around, or, you know, Flurry Worry and the rest, uh, is, like, I, I'm, like, saying, they assume you know the basics, and I think that this is something, like, you know, that's, that might be helpful, so. All right, so the Dimmy lost some influence. But yeah, Riemann's uh, really good stuff. And we're like almost to the point of the final year, so we don't take that penalty. Uh, and since I think it'll take a while to siege down, let's just, let's just let this run through. And then we'll tech up, and we will uh, attack. And while we're kind of doing this... Uh, our army width is going to increase our maximum army width because of uh, by two. So let's try to get a f total of four new Janissaries again. So it doesn't pull from our manpower pool, and they fight a little bit better. And again, we're not worried about we're not going to worry about Janissary disasters until at least the end of this age. So uh, let's go to kind of the estates mode, uh, and we'll see if we can recruit more Janissaries or if we have to wait. We got two here and two here, and that's it. And we'll say like, "Hey, you march down here." Oh yeah, they're uh, they're locked for uh, their morale locked. All right, so it looks like there are some uh, Moorish refugees coming in because. Castile is finally taking Granada. So, yeah, let's take them in. 
I'm not really too concerned about what Castile thinks about me. And let's uh, go ahead and again just increase uh, with Syria. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and we and you see uh, also if you wait until the time for that tech, it'll say like your innovative innovativeness is decreasing. Uh, innovativeness means like how far ahead you are on like techs, uh, and that'll increase and it'll give you some some bonuses. Uh, and also, I believe that later on you can build like blast furnaces and, and do stuff like that. So uh, I didn't even see Aragon taking it. Yeah, they took the extra pieces. <laughs> well, I mean, it's kind of a reconquista, right? All right, so we're going to click on the uh, military tech and advance. So now we're matched up to the Mamluks again. Now we've got a new unit type of cavalry. We're going to select that. Now, I know I was saying earlier, you know, hey, you know, make sure you do you know, upgrade during peace or when they're safe. But, you know, the ratio of, like, cavalry to infantry is, you know, it's it's pretty... It's pretty decent, you know, it's pretty small, but we'll still wait until this gets down to like zero just to reinforce a little bit more. And then we're going to go back in and we're going to we're going to fight them and hopefully win. Um, it says we can invest in new ideas. I'm not going to do that because we have not yet teched up. So, you know, again, kind of rule of thumb is first get to the correct tech and then worry about uh, ideas. So let's give this guy another siege tick. I'm not worried about money. I honestly, I've never been too concerned about government reform progress. Uh, maybe we should take the government reform progress. Because we are filling out the idea group, right? Uh, hmm. Now uh, let's take the government reform. And the price of paper has gone up. And so let's keep letting the siege tick down because they have no chance of taking the land yet. They're taking a little bit of attrition while sitting there. I mean, we are two over here. But we'll wait till we get to like full morale. Assuming that doesn't hit like zero. Okay. Um, I have no idea what these like religious school events are. Uh, so if anyone does know, let me know. All right, so yeah, you were right. You were definitely right, Firestar. Uh, it was just the fact that we were behind on tech. But that actually illustrates a good point. Uh, you know how I'm always harping on how you should uh, always get to, you know, to military tech, you know, even? And I guess th that you could even say that if you are currently in a conflict, keep an eye, you know, on your enemy's tech. And even, you know, if you see that they're higher than you, don't, sh don't attack or consider not attacking. And if you're in the middle of a war and they tech up, you might want to follow suit just so you don't lose battles. But 
Like those, like I, I know about the estates definitely, because um, I've been pissing off my estates since, since day one. Um, but I was asking about like it's saying like religious relations between the different like schools of thought, and I, that must be something new. Oh, okay, so, so you okay? So that does happen with this because I have no idea how that affects me. Okay, it doesn't matter though. I'm going Hanbali all the way, man. You know. You know, I hate to have these guys just sit around and take attrition, but, uh... Alright, so we're up to 91 war score. They're back down to low enthusiasm. Let's, uh, let's pull this guy who's just idling out, and let's see if they'll give in to our demands. Because we actually burned through a lot of, even even though I was trying to watch it, we burned through a lot of manpower just on that war alone. Uh, so I guess there's probably ways I could have done it better. Um, probably not sitting guys here and like taking 1% you know, month after month. That would have helped a lot. Uh, but I kind of wanted to avoid them kind of coming. Well, they probably would have been blocked by this fort. I guess... If I had done it again, when we reached that point where I was going to stop, I probably would have should have kept one guy in Damascus and one guy in Jaffa and just done it like that and just switched them on and off. Um, so again, I mean, it, when we end this war, we're going to take a look at like our losses and we'll see where all our losses came from. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be mostly attrition, but I could totally be wrong. So let's, uh, let's click on Diplomacy, Sue for Peace. Uh, and let's clear just to make sure we're, again, we're going to return course to Syria. And we want to return all the Syrian cores that you own. Okay. And now, you know, before he didn't even want to do that. Now he wants to do it and he's willing to give even more. So let's see if we can get some uh, war reps out of him. He's willing to do that. And uh, let's see, well... Okay, what else can we do? So, we're at 84. Maybe we can get him to release Hejaz as a vassal? No, that's too much. Um, and I don't really care about his rivals. In fact, I'm kind of happy with him having the rivals he does have. Um, the allies he does have. Uh, because they're weak. And if I was to make him, like, not have these allies, he might pick someone more powerful. So let's not, uh, let's not mess with his allies. Although we could end his guarantee of Cyprus. Is anyone else guaranteeing Cyprus? So one of our quests is to take out Cyprus. Um, no, they're only being guaranteed by the Mamluks. Alright, so let's see if we can revoke his guarantee. Well, so we're going to take all this land for Syria. Let's have him uh, annul his guarantee of Cyprus. Ha, 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 ha. So if we make them, force them to annul the, the guarantee of Cyprus, uh, we can't take war reps. War reps? Alright, I'm with you. Let's take the war reps instead. Uh, so let's, because I can always go in and take Cyprus later, you know, that's one of the later missions, I think. Uh, and the whole point of this is we want to kind of, uh, yeah, so let's sue for peace. Uh, let's get rid of the Cyprus annulling. We'll take war reps, and we'll see if we can take uh, the gold. 210 gold. That looks pretty good. So he's going to give all these cores back. 
to Syria. He's going to give us war reps. He's going to pay us 210 gold. I think that was a really good war. Uh, I really burnt through my manpower. Uh, I'm not happy about that. Uh, but, you know, what can you do? So the first thing I'm going to do, uh, now that this war is basically over, as soon as that he agrees to it. Alright. You see, had we taken the land directly for ourselves, uh, we would have gotten a lot more war projection. You see, we got this modifier called Mamluk's Lost Provinces in our war. Uh, and that's because we forced him to give it up, but we didn't actually take it from our rival. So our war, you know, power projection doesn't go up that high. But from here on, well, we'll see. But all right. Uh, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of all our mercs. Okay, and we will, uh, I guess we'll start marching our guys towards, uh, the capital. I think I'll tell this guy just to hold off here. Uh, and the idea being that we don't want them kind of stepping on each other on their way home and just you know, having attrition for no reason. Uh, we're going to take our entire fleet. And we're going to send it back up to our capital of Karim. And let's just make sure... We're clear. Yeah, combat with is 24 at this point. Alright. So our religious scholars thing has uh, expired. Let's ask them back for a second time. Well, we, we don't have to ask for them right away, right? And, uh, was that a, was that a follow? Um, I, I'm only working off one monitor, so, uh, if it was a Firestar or someone who's randomly lurking, thank you so much. Make yourself known. Alright, so we're going to take our fleet here, and we are going to break off... All of our light ships, all of our barks. We're going to immediately take these barks and we're going to privateer. Well, let's see what makes us. I think we should privateer uh, the Mamluks again. So we're going to privateer Alexandria uh, because it'll make us a little bit of money. Uh, but more importantly, it'll raise our power projection for messing around with our enemy. Uh, these other guys, they can just kind of hang out. Um, also, okay, so one thing I didn't mention all this game in, and I've totally completely forgotten to do, uh, is you can... You need full uh, naval maintenance in order for your, you know, light ships to perform their privateering or their protecting trade, because they kind of lose, you know, durability otherwise. Uh... What you can do is if you have a large force sitting around and, you know, you're not in a, you know, because you want someone protecting trade or privateering, you're not going to lower maintenance. What you can do is mothball your fleet. Um, this is especially useful if you're not playing, like, with a galley, you know, focused fleet in an inland sea, i.e. the Mediterranean and Black Sea. Uh, so if you're, like... Uh, England or France, you're not going to be building galleys. Your warships are going to be heavy ships. And those things are expensive to maintain. So what you can do is just take your fleet that's not going to be doing anything and you can just mothball them. What that means is you pay a reduced maintenance cost for it. 
However, they'll like slowly deteriorate uh, up to, down to. Oh, is the Baltic Sea also inland? Yeah, that makes sense. Like anywhere inside the Sound Toll. Um, so that what that means is you pay a reduced you know maintenance cost, but they will slowly degrade in terms of like durability until they hit like twenty five percent and they'll they'll bottom out there. Uh, and then so then what you have to remember is that if you're ever planning on going to war and using your ships again. You've got to unmothball them and then figure, okay, if I want them at full fighting strength, 100%, that's going to take me eight months to fully repair. So you you got to know eight months in advance, huh, I'm going to be going to war, let's unmothball these guys. Uh, it's something we can consider, although galleys are a lot cheaper uh, in terms of maintenance, and cogs are pretty cheap in terms of maintenance, uh, as opposed to a heavy ship. And uh, we're going to be, you know, you know I, I say we just kind of keep them handy for an upcoming war. And speaking of ships, actually, our next target, because we've been laying off of, uh, you know, Christendom here for a while, and our claims are going to be expiring soon. Not the permanent ones, but the ones that we fabricated ourselves. Yeah, we got about, like, roughly 10 years before they all start disappearing, all the ones that aren't, like, permaclaims. So, um, that's going to involve fighting Venice uh, and a bunch of other guys. So, let's just go into the military ledger and check uh, on uh, naval strength. And we'll say rivals. So, Venice has 13 light ships and 9 galleys and 15 transports. Like, transports, I don't worry about too much. Uh, galleys, nine, uh, and we have nine, so we equal them in galleys. They have more light ships. Uh, so what we can do, actually, and then we also have to think about their allies as well. It's like, their ally with the knights and the Geno Genoa, and then they have a trade league as well. Um, because I'm thinking in the peacetime, while we wait for our uh, manpower to tick back up again for this next war, uh, I'm thinking we uh, start building more galleys so we can kind of dominate this, the Mediterranean and the Black Sea. Uh, the, uh, the other option is we just build more light ships. And the great thing about light ships is they're not as good at fighting you know, in the inland seas as galleys are. Uh, they cost a little bit more, I believe, to maintain. But you can, uh, y you know, use them during peacetime to privateer or protect trade. So, um, I I'll tell you what. I think we're going to just move our, uh, our guys back. What the heck? We'll just slow down. I mean, we're, we've already got the tech. We're just behind on ideas, so. Yeah. The thing is, they're like they've got like a lot more utility during peacetime, but I, I think you're I think you're right, Firestar. Uh, we'll probably use this peacetime to build up a bunch of galleys, um, enough so that we feel comfortable, and we'll build transports as well. Uh, not not many, but enough that we can land on like uh, roads and Crete, and uh, just so we know that we don't have to worry about you know the enemy alliance, you know controlling the seas and not letting us get into places, especially like you know the capital of Venice, Venezia. So, so let's keep going. It was a nice war. Oh, and I didn't look when we accepted peace. I just clicked right through it instead of looking at our losses, like I promised. That's silly of me. Um, no way. So, uh, what can we do with this spare diplomat while he's sitting around? We'll send him to outrage countries. Look at our glorious vassal down here. He's a good size. He's a little chunky there. 
Um, and now again, we're talking about it. You see how his liberty desire, before it was zero, now it's 11%. And the reason for that is all going to be because of uh, his development. You see, he went from having like 0 0.7, 0 0.7 liberty desire from development to 114. Um, but he's still within like a good threshold. Um, this also means though he'll be a lot more effective in our next war. He'll be able to raise a larger army. Uh, he'll be able to do more stuff. So that's good. So we can finally take that Diplotech. So let's take it. It's great. And so we got about, you know, well, we got 12 years until the next one happens. Uh, by that time, we're going to, we're going to, so now we're going to have to start main, paying more attention to kind of the institution spread. Um, we might want to think about taking on some edicts in places that are generating, uh, well, let's take a look at the the state edict for uh, spreading uh, advancement. Institution spread is 33%. I don't know if that actually affects kind of the institution gain within a province or if it's only the spread. So I'm going to have to go ahead and research that just to be sure. Um, in fact, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a cut in it. Uh, I know this has been kind of a short episode. Uh, it does it do both? Oh, excellent, Firestar. And what's our income now? We're making good money. Let's uh, let's take a look at uh, the institution uh, map mode here. And let's just talk uh, institution spread. So it's going to be fastest here in our capital. Uh, also, a great thing about the capital, I don't know if I mentioned it, but even though it says it reduces the maintenance cost of a state by 200%, in your capital, I believe that's cut in half, so it only increases state maintenance by 100. But I guess we'll be able to see as soon as we click the button. Uh, so if it was 200%, it would be like, you know, 0.36. Otherwise, it's going to be 0 0.24. I guess I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. Um, I got that from a Roomba, so uh, I blame a Roomba on this one. Uh, let's see what else we got here. So we control kind of all of this. Let's also do kind of advancement effort there. We're going to do advancement effort here. Here, here, uh, let's see where we are with the money. Ah, oh, we're still pretty good. So we'll go back to institutions. Basically anywhere that's, that's spawning institution. Oh, did I hit the wrong, uh... Why is it not showing that anymore? Huh, that's weird. All right, so let's keep on putting an advancement edicts wherever uh, we've got the institution spawning. And this is the Renaissance, of course. All right, uh, since you're still here, Firestar, let me know if you can still hear me because I just hit the mute and I just want to make sure I unmuted properly. I actually messed up one of my videos doing that. Just ended up me, you know, racing my cursor around. Okay, so I think that's good. Uh, it's gonna kind of take a chunk. Okay, excellent. So you see, we dropped by like four gold per turn just on the advancement effort. Um, again, since you know we're in peace mode, uh, again, I'm not gonna drill. I'm gonna just drop army maintenance. And uh, we're going to build boats, uh, or specifically galleys. Um, 
What's our, what are our limits here? So we're actually above our naval force limit already. So let's... I mean, do we need all those cogs? What if we were to get rid of like six cogs and then get to force limit with just uh, galleys? I think that would that would be a pretty good look. Um, uh, drop down to twelve, so you can send like half a force in to invade an island like Crete or Rhodes. And it looks like they're only got they only got like a seven stack, so twelve on six, like naval invasion. You know, you'd still have kind of a in kind of a, what do you call it, an outflank maneuver. Uh, you know, going over the naval limit. You think two times the naval force limit? You know, because I was saying in my last stream that, you know, going over the naval force limit, it doesn't hurt as bad as going over your military limit. Um... So, yeah, I mean, and we, we do have a decent amount of income right now. I'm not going to go to two times the naval force limit, but I'm not going to delete uh, ships either. Let's say we build... Uh, I don't know. Another six galleys right now. And then we'll see how much extra we're paying in penalty. And then we'll, we'll reassess while we kind of wait for our army to uh, replenish. So let's go to our macro builder. Uh, let's choose galleys. And we'll go... Uh, and you see here it also tells you like how long it takes to build each one. Uh, so we'll just go one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, don't double up in the same uh, province if you don't have to. Uh, because then it'll wait for one to build and it'll start building another and it'll take a long time. Uh, luckily, galleys, you can build them pretty quickly. They're not like heavy ships that take forever. Uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, they're, they're not very expensive, as you can see. We built a bunch of them. Uh, you know, heavies are like 50 gold each. Uh, so that's an investment. Uh, so, so I say we're like in a pretty good spot. I think I'm gonna put a pin in it. Um, normally I'd stream for much longer, but I really want to make sure I know how to edit videos, and I want to upload to like uh, the old ones to the YouTube channel, edit them down, so there's less of me hemming and hawing and less uh, less coughing and and, and weird. You know, checking OBS and that kind of stuff. Uh, so I'd like to do that uh, f you know, right now. So thanks for stopping by. Uh, and if you're watching this elsewhere, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a nice day.